Today I'm making an airless basketball out of a special type of filament called PEBA or PEBA filament. The brand of this PEBA is called Yasin. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you've probably seen the airless basketballs that I've made out of the Kimya PEBA S filament. It is the filament that's had the best bounce and durability that I've tested so far. It actually has a bounce that's really similar to the basketballs that you can actually buy from the store. But unfortunately, Kimya has officially discontinued their PEBA S filament, so I've been looking into alternatives that will perform either just as well or even better than the Kimya S filament, and I'm going to start with this Yasin PEBA. And since they only come in about 500 gram rolls, I had to purchase two so that I could print a full-size basketball. But before I ever print anything with the PEBA filament, I always put the rolls in the dryer for a few hours. And after the filament's ready, I just run the filament directly from the dryer into my printer and I continue to dry the filament while it's actually printing the basketball. I also try to put a good amount of printer bed glue on the print bed before printing, both for adhesion and as a release agent so the basketball can actually be removed from the printer bed after it's done printing. Next, I had to make sure all the settings for this PEBA filament was set up correctly in my Bamboo Studio slicer. The first thing I had to do is just look at the recommended settings from the manufacturer, and because it's quite different from the Kimya PEBA S settings, I had to go in and change some things. The biggest changes were dropping the nozzle temp from about 250 to 230 and the bed temp from 90 to 55C. And once everything looked good and was ready to go, all that was left was to send the print to my printer. So as you notice, the rolls of the PIBA only came in 500 gram rolls. So what I had to do was wait for the first one to run out. And then when the machine told me that it was out, I just went ahead and switched to the other roll of filament and ran that up to the printer and just resumed the printing and it worked out just fine. And then after a couple days of printing, the basketball was ready to come out and ready to be cleaned up. So because this PIBA filament is a little squishier than the Kimya PIBA S, I didn't add enough support material to hold the ball well to actually print the bottom of the basketball as well as it should have so it's going to need some repair. Another thing that I didn't set very well was the Z distance between the supports and the ball so I'm going to skip the flush cutter removal and go straight to an angle grinder and sanding disc but first I need to actually repair it. So to repair the bottom of the ball, I'm going to use this 3D pen and some extra PIBA filament. And what I'm going to do is set the temperature to about 210 degrees C and just run some extra PIBA filament through the 3D pen until I know that it's the PIBA coming out. And then I'm going to do a combination of melting some of those areas with the hot 3D pen tip and actually shooting some of the PIBA filament out onto some of the actual big holes and spots that need major repair so that I can sand it off later. Once everything on the bottom was as repaired as I could get it, I took the ball out to the garage and grabbed my angle grinder with a sanding disc attached to it and just grinded the supports off. If you're going to try this technique at your own risk, make sure to always wear personal protective equipment and just please be very careful with it. After grinding the supports enough to remove them without causing any sort of big divots or holes in the basketball, it was ready for weighing and bounce testing. This is what the ball looked like when it was all cleaned up and ready to go. And just for comparison, I wanted to show what it looked like compared to the Kimya PIBA S on the left. The Yasin PIBA is a lot kind of a darker tannish color. The Kimya is a lot brighter and white. And as I mentioned before, it is just a tiny bit squishier than the Kimya PIBA S filament. Next, I went and weighed the basketball. I was hoping for about 610 grams, which is right in the official NBA weight, but it was about right at 600. Next was the bounce test to see how this Yasin PIBA actually bounces compared to the Kimya S PIBA. And after comparing the bounce a few times, it's pretty obvious that the Kimya PIBA filament bounces better, but the Yasin PIBA does have a pretty good bounce. I also wanted to compare the Yasin against the BQ PLA HR filament, which is about half the cost, and the Yasin filament does bounce better than the BQ. Before taking this PIBA basketball out to a court, I wanted to see if it would pass the 500 dribble test, and it did, so I did end up taking it out to a basketball court and just seeing how it holds up when I actually play some basketball with it. I was at the court playing basketball for a long time, and even though there were some printing issues with the bottom of the ball, it held up the entire time, so I'm actually pretty impressed. 
In previous videos, I had quite a lot of people asking me what the settings were that I used to print some of these airless basketballs with, and for this PIPA filament, I'll just go over the main settings that I had. For example, the nozzle temperature was at 230, the bed temperature was at 55 degrees, and I'll show you my cooling settings. I'm not going to go into this very much. Next we're going to hop over to the quality settings. I was using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and used a 0.3 millimeter layer height. And the only other quality setting I'm going to share is that I had the Z seam position set to random. Next we'll go over the strength settings. I had four walls or perimeters set for the sides and bottom and for the top I had five walls set. And for infill, I used a 50% gyroid infill. It seems to work pretty well for the airless basketballs. And for speed, I had all of the printing speed settings at about 40 millimeters per second, except for the bridges, which I had 20 millimeters per second. I left all the travel speeds at default. And for the support settings, I ended up using some tree slim supports and I manually painted custom supports on the bottom of the ball so that I only touched the bottom. And the initial layer expansion I set to 5 millimeters. that's really just the brim for the supports, it just helps with adhesion to the print bed. And for the Z distance I had that at 0.28, that wasn't what I printed with, that was too small, but 0.28 should be much better so that you hopefully don't have to use an angle grinder to remove yours. With these settings and the 0.6 nozzle size, it will take just over 2 days and about 653 total grams to print the entire basketball. One big issue that I ran into and did not foresee was the fact that when I was making the STL model and printer profile for this filament, I was easily able to order it off of AliExpress, but since making the printer profiles and posting this video, I am no longer able to purchase it from AliExpress. The only location I've been able to find where you can still purchase this Yasin Piba where I'm actually located is from Alibaba.com. So if you're able to get yourself some of this Yasin Piba, I hope you can at least use the model and printer profile that I created for it. So just to recap, it looks like this Yasin Piba, although it doesn't bounce as well as the Kimya Piba S filament, it does still bounce better than some of the mid-range filament like the BQ PLA HR or even the Wizdream Flexi Tough filament. This filament was about $60 per 500 gram roll and I had to buy two of them for a full size basketball. If you're looking for high performing filament that seems to hold up really well and have a budget of $120 I would recommend this filament but if that's too expensive I would just stick with some of the mid range filaments like the BQ PLA HR or the Wizdream Flexi Tough. I have some exciting filaments to try in the near future and I'll finally be coming out with a video for filaments like this Fiberflex 30D that's taken me a long time and I just finally was able to get my hands on some of this filamentum piba as well so be sure to stay tuned for that. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.